In the previous video, we studied determinants of aggregate demand. In this video, we will study determinants of aggregate supply. Can you imagine thousands of people demanding different commodities but no one to supply it to them? Tough to imagine, right? Supply is the heart of any economy. So let's dig a little deeper and try to understand it intuitively. Welcome to the Sagarai channel, my friends. Before starting, I want you all to go and see the video on aggregate demand. If you do so, then you'll be able to understand this video pretty easily. Aggregate supply is defined as the minimum amount of sales proceeds the entrepreneur expects to receive from the sale of output at any given level of employment. Now if you compare this definition with aggregate demand, then you will come to know that the only difference here is in the term minimum sales proceed. Rest everything remains the same. However, that small part does change the meaning of the entire sentence. Let us see how. In the last video, we replaced the word sales proceeds with revenue. Do it here as well. So we now can read the line as minimum amount of revenue that the entrepreneurs expect to receive from the sale of output at any given level of employment. This means across the country, all the entrepreneurs together expect at least some amount of minimum revenue that they should get from producing their output. If they do not get that minimum amount of revenue, they will stop producing. This means that the supply which a country will receive will only be that much as much as the minimum revenue the entrepreneurs are expecting in return at a certain level of employment. The supply which a country receives is nothing but the aggregate supply and replace revenue with sales proceeds and there you go you have your original definition of aggregate supply. In simple words, aggregate supply means the total amount of goods and services that a country produces. The above definition also means the same. Just go through this once more and you will understand. Now you must still be wondering how aggregate supply and aggregate demand are different. For this, let's see an example. You must understand that the example is oversimplified for your understanding. It just helps you get a gist of what aggregate demand and aggregate supply tell. So don't think of the example as being the correct definition. Okay, let's start. Say there's a country with 50 people living in it and has a small government. These 50 people will be willing as well as have the ability to spend on consuming things, investing into new businesses, plus their government too will consume and invest. On top of that, the entrepreneurs of this country might also export and import things from the rest of the world outside. If we were to talk in numeric terms, then let us say that these people are willing as well as have the ability to pay $10 each on consumption and investment. Whereas, the government spends $20 on consumption and investment. Plus, they export goods worth 10 and import goods worth 5. This leaves us with the net earning of $5. If we add them all up, we get $1.45. This $1.45 is what the entrepreneurs will expect as revenue. This is aggregate demand. On the other hand, Aggregate supply means the amount of revenue that the entrepreneur should get if you want them to produce output. Hence, if entrepreneurs expect $75 and you are willing to pay only $45, then they won't produce. However, if they expect at least $25 and you are offering them $45, they'll happily produce. If you are still confused, then do watch the video on theory of employment which I will be uploading next week and all your doubts will be cleared. Aggregate supply is the total amount of output that a country produces and this output is dependent upon certain components. However, the four main components on the basis of which the output of a country depends are natural resources, human resources, stock of capital and technical knowledge. These are nothing but the factors of production that you have heard of. Remember land, labor, capital and entrepreneur? Let's look at natural resources first. 
Whenever someone talks about land to you, you start picturing a piece of land in front of your eyes. However, in economics, land has a bigger meaning. In economics, any gift that you get from nature, like rivers, fertile soil, minerals, rains, etc., which are below the surface of the earth, above the surface of the earth, or on the surface of the earth, are referred to as land. You see, because of this, any country with large number of natural resources will end up having a higher aggregate supply as well. Take United States of America for example. The reason why they are able to produce so much of output is because of the abundant natural resources that they have. The second determinant of aggregate supply is human resources. Human resources refer to the labor force a country has. It is common sense that country with more amount of labor force will be able to produce higher amount of output, for example India and China, whereas a country with lower amount of labor force like Japan will produce a smaller output. However, just having too many amount of people to work is not enough. They all should be dedicated, motivated and highly skilled and then only can they produce a high amount of output. All the above factors contribute to human resource. The third component of aggregate supply is talk of capital. It is a man-made factor of production. People in the economy save their income and that saving later translates to investment. New investments help in generating new money, the process we call as capital formation. However, in economics, money is not equivalent to capital. Capital is a broader term. It includes all the things that help you produce. For example, raw materials, machinery tools, buildings, electricity generation plants, etc. One interesting thing about capital is that its supply can't be changed in the short run. How do you supply roads and buildings in quick succession? Hence, in the short run, supply of capital is assumed to be fixed. Last but not the least, aggregate supply greatly depends on the state of technology. This means a country which has advanced technology will produce higher than the one which doesn't have so much of technology. Every country learns something new in the production process. This knowledge should be applied by the country and should enhance the production process for higher production. Plus, use of modern technology also helps facilitate large-scale production. For example, the use of computers has helped many logistic companies to maintain their records in an efficient way. Friends, a lot of them have asked me to make this videos in Hindi. Would you like me to do so? Or is the English language okay? Let me know in the comment section. According to the number of comments I receive, we will decide how we can go about it. And also let me know if there is anything I can improve on. If you do like these videos, then do give me a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe. Until then, adios. Hasta la vista.